After the Civil War, many poor Texans, both black and white, took to sharecropping. It was the system that emerged to replace the formerly enslaved labor force on big farms. The owners of those plantations needed labor. Picking the cotton was done by hand, and anything more than a few acres required hired workers. A sharecropper worked as a tenant farmer, handling the large landowner's crops and living in housing on the landowner's property. Typically, the owner also supplied the cottonseed, tools, and the animals to till the fields. In return, the tenant family kept a share of one-half to two-thirds of the profit after expenses, with the landowner getting the rest. Farm families were historically large. The reason was simple. Farming required a great deal of work, and each new arrival was another addition to the workforce. Children not even in school yet were generally given some sort of daily chores. On many family farms, tending the livestock or kitchen garden, or fetching water from the well or creek, were tasks that fell to the children. The older and stronger the children, the heavier their assigned work. With a fair landlord, some sharecropping families stayed on the same place for multiple generations. Education for many of those tenant farmers was sparse, so being able to survive and eat well was a worthy goal. In many cases, however, landowners took advantage to maximize their own profits. They manipulated expenses to prevent a sharecropping family from making any profit at all. Under some tenant contractors, the sharecroppers were forced to buy all their supplies from the landowner at whatever prices they set. There is no question that with segregation in place, black farmers frequently fared worse than whites. In some cases, the disputes between tenant and landowner even ended in violence. Starting in the 1870s, thousands of Texas farmers viewed the deck as being stacked against them. High bank rates, the crop lien system, unfair market access, and shady landowners were all keeping sharecropping families in poverty. The answer for many was in collectivism. The farm union movement was highly influential for several decades under many organizations, beginning with the Farmers Alliance. Immigrant farmers from places like Germany, Poland, and the Scandinavian countries were heavily involved in the unions. They backed several political third parties, and they had electoral successes across Texas. For a time, black and white farmers worked together in the unions, but Jim Crow segregation eventually prevailed. Franklin Roosevelt's New Deal addressed several, but not all, of the farm union's goals. Multiple factors brought the decline of sharecropping. Many African-American Texans became fed up with the racism and violence that they faced every day. They began to migrate to big cities in the Midwest and California, where industrial jobs promised a larger paycheck. Manufacturing jobs came to Texas, too, at places like automobile plants in Houston and Dallas, and thousands of whites left the farm for better pay in the cities. The biggest change that hastened the end of the system was technological advancement. The first mechanized cotton-picking machines could replace 40 to 50 workers. Today, sharecropping is rare, but seasonal and migrant farm workers are still a part of Texas rural life. Ah! <laughs>